Hey everyone and welcome to this video. I recently read through one of my favorite general aviation magazines and came across the latest sales figures that the general aviation industry has achieved in 2020. By looking through these numbers I surprisingly found out that the Cessna 172S is still the single most sold airplane in its class. Only Cirrus sold more of the SR22 series who is clearly playing in a bit of a different league there. Now don't get me wrong, I love the Cessna 172, but then these numbers still left me with a little question. How can an airplane whose airframe has been mostly unchanged for about 60 years, I guess, still be uh, what is being sold in the highest numbers? Is the general aviation industry really that non-innovative or are pilots and flight schools owners maybe just a little traditional and maybe uninspired with their buying decisions? I shall maybe find out by looking at what I see as um, sort of a modern alternative to the good old Cessna 172. This everyone is the Technam P2010. Yes, you're right, the plane has been around for a while, but still few people seem to really know about it. You're looking here at a fully part 23 certified four-seater piston airplane from the Italian manufacturer Technam. That's a clean sheet design from, as the name suggests, 2010. I see this as sort of maybe a modern Skyhawk and uh, it has been recently updated with new engine options with an upgraded interior and uh, even more. Does this have the potential to be the Skyhawk of the 21st century? Let's take it to the skies and find out. Now before I'm getting airborne with uh, Thierry, the CEO of one of uh, Switzerland's biggest flight schools located here in Baal, who has recently purchased this beauty here um, as his fourth Technam for his flight school, I shall give you a quick tour around this beauty. I need to mention this airplane is literally only a few weeks old and I'm very excited to be able to take a flight in it. Let's have a look around. One of the main differences compared to the otherwise similar Cessna piston planes is the fuse launch. While the High Wing Classic from Wichita in Kansas is an all-metal airplane, the Italian opponent's fuselage is made from carbon fiber, while the wings are also metal. Technam claims to make uh, best use of the advantages of each material. The easy-to-repair metal at the wings, so hangar and handling damage won't cause you much trouble, while the lightweight and streamlined carbon fiber fuselage will give you a more useful load and an increased performance. Before ordering this plane, you'll have the choice between three engine options. You can either have a 180 horsepower like coming IO360, which unlike in the IO360 in the Cessna 172, can also burn unleaded MoGas. Secondly, Tecnam recently introduced a Continental CD170 horsepower diesel engine in uh, the P2010, which might be very interesting for uh, markets where the availability of Afgas is limited. And I'm standing now in front of what uh, is the flagship version of the 2010 with its uh, Lycoming IO390 horsepower engine. Unlike in the uh, Skyhawk and the Skylane, the occupants of the back seats do get their own entry door. The separate uh, baggage door provides uh, easy access to your luggage with enough room in the baggage compartment. In terms of the avionics, the aircraft will come equipped with the Garmin's G1000 MXI, which is uh, the standard in most airplanes of this category. Now though, it's time to hop into the plane and go flying. The seat adjusts uh, like in a normal car. As a fancy feature, the height adjustment is done electrically something uh, you usually don't see in general aviation aircraft. The engine starting procedure for the 215 horsepower light coming is basically just uh, as easy as it is in the uh, 180 horsepower IO360. The Technam has a castering nose gear actually, so unlike in the Cessna 172, you will be using differential braking for steering. And I can tell that for now it feels really natural and really good after all. Okay, I think it's like time to take. 
We departed out of runway 33 in Baal with its uh, most powerful engine version, uh, the P2010 accelerates nicely and uh, once the flaps are retracted and you have accelerated to about 85 to 90 knots, it climbs quite well with an average rate of uh, 8 to 900 feet per minute. We took a right turn out and departed Baal's airspace along uh, Route Sierra with a very beautiful view over Switzerland's uh, third largest city. While climbing the electric rudder trim, which is uh, controlled from a switch in the middle console, takes away the rudder pressure so your legs can relax during the climb. It's really loud in here. Yeah. That's the Krieg Shabbat. I do. We had to all this probably. Yeah. Just call the stove. The Garmin G1000 will advise you with an oil alert over the loudspeakers once you're approaching the pre-selected altitude. In this particular plane, this uh, kind of warning is still very, very loud. And uh, for now, Thierry and his maintenance uh, team hasn't figured out how to bring that uh, volume down. So uh, if Technam or anybody else watching this video knows how to fix that, uh, please uh, put a comment down below. To stay below the airspace above, uh, we leveled off at 2,500 feet and Thierry showed me how to set up a nice little cruise at about 65% MCT. That's already MCT. the like, cruise setup that you choose to for yeah. 22,245. Oh. That gives you about now uh, 120 up yeah. through. And we got a fuel flow of about 43, 44 liters. Yeah. That's for the United States guys, it's about 12 gallons, right? 11 to 12 gallons. Shortly afterwards we climbed higher and tried a couple of stalls and steep turns in the Italian four-seater. I can report that there's nothing to report. The airplane behaves quite well and mostly as you'd expect. One thing that sets it apart from the Skyhawk is that it's a little more vivid around the yaw axis. According to Thierry this requires a little more attention while recovering from stall or a slow flight. So don't just slam the throttle forward, instead first unload the wings let the airspeed build and then smoothly advance the throttle. Before we are joining the circuit again for a couple of touch and goes, let's have a brief look at some numbers. I quickly compared the take of performance figures for the two competitors. The Cessna needs about 10 to 15% less runway to get airborne. When looking at the cruise speed while comparing both planes with their 180 horsepower like Cummings, Technam wins with an advantage of around about 10 knots to airspeed. And again for weight and balance, the P2010 will offer you about 30 kilograms of extra useful load, which compares roughly to one hour of extra fuel, both configured with the IO360s, Garmin's GFC700 autopilot, premium leather interior, but without further options. Now this last slide here shows two things. First of all, how incredibly expensive planes in this category have become these days. And secondly, that this entire comparison is actually a fair one. The Technam is even a little cheaper here in the EU. Hotel Golf for Yankee Club for the option runway 33, the wind 270 degrees, 12 knots, maximum 16. That's for the option 3 you have I think. 75 is fl final speed for flex yeah. full, right? Exactly. So it's between 80 and 85. Back. Yep, so you can see we're back in the circuit for some touch and goes. Thierry explained that landing the Technum will work best if you're not trying to flare it as long as humanly possible, but instead to let it settle down once it's ready to do so. The reason for that is that the P2010 will again be a little more sensitive and tends to get lively around its yaw axis shortly before reaching stall speed. So leaving just a tiny little bit of power until initiating the flare, let the pitch come up and have it settle down smoothly. Perfect, just wait. Just wait. Wait, 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 wait. Right, yeah. 
After having had two more laps around the pattern, I'm uh, convinced the plan will work for training just as well as the, the 172 does. I found nothing a student wouldn't be able to handle. And in case you're concerned about firewall damage after landing on the nose wheel, the Technum has a shock absorber for its uh, nose wheel, so this uh, classic problem people often see on the 182s won't happen here. So you as well, Kiri is texting me back and the there. It was an awesome flight, a really interesting plane for me. I don't really see a reason to buy a 172 after this flight to be completely honest. If you happen to be uh, living here in the area and you want to learn to fly or uh, you're a pilot here in the region of Baal, make sure to check out the, the flight school here in Baal. That's fsb.aero. Can I have a flight with Thierry as well? True. Really great infrastructure here. Cool flight school. Modern fleet. Make sure to check them out. Thank you, you may report to Thanks for watching this video. Have a great day. Long Happy landing. Uh, if you like Thank it, you subscribe to the channel. And, uh, the you may taxi to Thanks a lot.